Hello everyone, welcome back. Let's continue learning more about arrays. In our last tutorial, we learned about basics of arrays. We understood that arrays were a way to collect multiple values using a single variable. And also that arrays were fixed size ordered collections. They were used to store collections of same type of variables. We learned that array indices start at zero. We also understood how to declare arrays. There were multiple ways to declare arrays, but one of the recommended way is to provide the data type followed by the brackets and then provide the name of the array. There is another way also which is not preferred where we provide the brackets after the reference name. We also learned how to create arrays and initialize arrays using some default values. So these were the arrays. Most programming language gives you a way to save sets of data in memory and they are usually called collections. In our last tutorial, we had seen about array declarations. In this tutorial, we will learn more about arrays. Now let's understand more nitty gritties about arrays using some examples. Arrays are actually objects. By objects, I mean arrays are stored in heap memory and not on stack memory. By objects, I also mean that arrays have some fields like length. We can use length field of array to find out the number of elements in an array. Also, accessing an invalid array index causes an exception. Let's see this in example. So here I have an integer array where I have initialized the array with five integers 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Now if I print the array 4, then I see the value 5 as the output. Note that array indices start at 0. So 1 has the index 0, 2 has the index 1, 3 has index three, uh, 2, 4 has index 3 and 5 has index 4. Note that the fifth index doesn't exist. But if I provide here 5, then let's see what happens. We get array index out of bounds exception. This is what I had mentioned here. If we access an invalid array index, we get an exception. Note that we also have to learn that array elements have some default values. By, de by default values, I mean that whenever you declare any type of array, the array is initialized with some default values. So when you declare an integer array, then the values of an array element is initialized with the default value of integer. So here in this program, I have declared multiple arrays. The first one is an integer array of size 2. Here I am trying to print the default value of integer array at index 1. Similarly, I have double array. I have a boolean array. I have a string array. And then I have created a dummy employee class at bottom. And I have also created an array of employee class. If I execute it, I will get five statements on the system out console which will tell me the default value of these array elements. Let's run this. You will understand that the default value of an integer array element is 0. The default value of a double array element is 0, 0.0. The default value of boolean array is false. The default value of string array is null. Note that string is an object and an object is usually referenced by some value. Here array element is also acting like a reference and since the reference is not pointing to any valid object, the value is null. Default value of an object array is also null. So this is what we mentioned that array elements have default values. Now size of an array can be defined at runtime. Now this is pretty interesting to understand. We had mentioned that whenever we declare array, then we have to mention the size of the array while we are creating an array. Then what does this mean that we can provide the runtime size of an array? Let's understand by using a program. Let's say I want to declare an array, but I don't know its size initially. 
I want to take the size from the user. So I can use the scanner class. I can ask user to enter size of an array. And once he enters an integer, I use that as a array size. And then I can declare an array. Array is equal to new int and then I can provide this array size. Now this way I have declared an array and then then what I can do is I can say the size of array is array dot. Now when you put say array dot you see some fields available. One of the interesting field is length. As an array is an object and length is the valid field, we can use this. And when we run this, it will ask us the size of an array. I enter 10 and then we get the input is and then we get output as the size of array is 10. This is how we took an input at the runtime and used it to initialize an array, initialize that size array. So size of an array can be defined at runtime and arrays have length field which can be used to get the length of an array. Now these were the basic things of array. Finally, arrays can be partially filled. What I mean by this is, here I have declared an integer array. Now this array is right now empty. All the values are initialized to zero. Now I can say that array integer 3 the index 3 will have an value 5 and then something at value at index 5 will have value 10. Here what I am doing is this should be the name of an array. So I am assigning a value of 5 to the element at index 3 and I am assigning a value 10 to element at index 5. However, the elements at other locations are not assigned any value. This is fine. This is what it says is arrays can be partially filled. So in this tutorial, we learned more about arrays. We learned about default values in arrays. We also learned about array index exceptions. In our next tutorial, we are going to learn about more advanced features and more advanced collections to store elements. Goodbye.